A lot of my earliest memories are of, of feeling like a girl and not being able to, to be a girl. I knew I was trans and I knew I eventually needed to do something about it, but like, it's, it's terrifying, especially in Utah. Most of the media about trans people out there is like grief porn. It's like, this is super sad, look how awful it is. And that's important because when people understand the struggle, they empathize and relate better. But for me, if I could have seen a trans person's story where it's like, yeah, I'm trans and I have a normal job and a normal life and a boyfriend, like, that would have changed my life. Trans people just want the right to exist in public. My childhood was a lot of moments of trying to be myself, only to have the people in my life tell me that that was inappropriate or not how I was supposed to act or I needed to get over it. Um, so I buried a lot of those parts of myself pretty deeply. You know, I just grew up hating myself. My parents are good people, but they're very religious, very conservative. And I think it's important to remember that the amount of information available back then versus what's available now is just, an incredible uh, amount of distance between those two places. I was always stealing clothes from my older sister all the time. Um, and at one point my mom found like the stash of stuff that I had taken from my sisters or managed to get over my embarrassment enough to buy at a store. And they were very concerned about that. She had me speak to my, my LDS bishop who is like lay clergy. It was actually my, <laughs> my best girlfriend. It was her dad. So I already knew him really well. Um, and in a way, he was really, he was really loving about it. Like he, even though he did the absolute wrong thing, like he didn't, he didn't mean to fuck me up as bad as he did. Um, <laughs> so like in my late teens, I left and went to college and it was the first time I was away from other people. Um, but like I still had all of that trauma from all of those messages of being told over and over again that I needed to be a certain way. If I could sum all of that up like really quickly, um, like I tried to kill myself three times. Um, I was hospitalized for it twice. I was a heroin addict. Um, I almost failed out of school. I used to hang out with thieves and deadbeats, a coin flip away from being dead. And literally the only thing that's different about my life then and now is the permission to love myself. I had a therapist who suggested communication and so I took an intro to writing class and as part of that I got to write some opinion editorials for our school paper um, and people liked them. And that was probably the first time I ever realized that I have value as a human being. Um, having a little bit of responsibility I found very empowering. By 2012, there was at least Janet Mock and Carmen Carrera, and they're both um, pretty well-known transgender activists, and you know they were really helpful to me in like realizing that like being trans isn't the end of your life. Like you can be trans and do other things, and when people try to sensationalize your story or make it exploitive, like you can shut them down and like hold your identity, like you don't have to explain to anyone. That's when I came out to my parents and my older brother. I remember the first person I told in person was my friend Dean and his older brother Sam. And I stood on their front porch. And I cried for 30 minutes before I could even just say the words. So getting on hormones is a real game changer, obviously. You know, it's helped my, my outward appearance match how I feel on the, the inside. And just made me feel a lot more emotionally grounded to the person I am. Like I'm a lot more in connect, connection with my emotions. I cry a lot easier, but I feel happier easier. And then in October, I was a bridesmaid in my friend's wedding. You know, I had almost forgotten what that feels like to be one of the girls. Um, and it just made me feel like really validated and like all of the, like just the insecurity and anxiety that I used to have pretending to be a guy in those same friendly relationships just went away. 
the week before Christmas, I worked my very last shift here as a guy. Um, and She did not want people to feel uncomfortable. She did not want people to shy away and say, oh, I'm not gonna go up and, and talk to Becca. And I remember Becca telling me, I'm the same person. I'm the same person that loves video games and loves gaming and loves certain interests that people talk to me all the time about what's changing. So we sent out an email and this was right on December 31st, New Year's Eve, because Becca was going to make this change effective January 1, which I thought was incredibly appropriate as the calendar turns to a new year. This is a whole new chapter in Becca's journey. And so I said, today Fox 13 expands our, upon our community's longstanding history of diversity and inclusion by welcoming the brave decision of one of our esteemed colleagues. Becca's decision has taken considerable deliberation, courage, and strength. This transition might take some of you more time to process than others. Please take a moment to read the attached note from Becca. In my experience, people will sometimes avoid me or walk on eggshells at first out of fear of making a mistake or saying something insensitive or even embarrassing. It matters a lot more to me that people care and are trying rather than that they never make a mistake. So don't let anxiety keep you away. While my name and pronouns are changing, most things about me are the same. If you talked to me about politics, movies, video games, or science fiction before, those conversations aren't going anywhere. I'm the same person I've always been, just a lot more comfortable in my own skin. I want to say how grateful I am for the support I've had here over the years. In general, coming out is a scary thing for trans folks, but I'm fortunate to be navigating this journey among such fine people. Sincerely, Becca. My first day at work here as Rebecca was January 1st, which felt very symbolic, but ended up making it a lot more complicated because it was a holiday and uh, the way news works is like no one can take vacation during sweeps and then there's like a mass exodus once sweeps is over so like a lot of people were gone and but for the most part it went really great that's been really life-changing to be able to be myself and do the job that i love and you know play board games and war games with my friends and do all the stuff i used to do but get to do it as myself instead of that other person and my life has just gotten indescribably better since I've transitioned. I couldn't have done it without a supportive workplace. Like if I had to deal with all of the stress and trauma of transition, all of the complications that come with transitioning as a member of a Mormon family and do a, a hostile or barely tolerant workplace on top of that, that would have been impossible, frankly. Not impossible, because people do it. There are people out there doing it right now, but it would have been very difficult. But having people cheer you on just makes it so much easier um, and you can do anything if you have your friends with you and I just feel so fortunate to have the friends and the co-workers that I do because you know they haven't just tolerated me they've they've celebrated me. I have known Becca for a long time and I've seen a bit of the process that she has gone through and Knowing that she had a work family who were all willing to back her up and were all willing to accept her for who she is, I do think it allowed her to shine. It really has enabled her to just be herself and just live her life. It's beautiful to me to see that someone feels empowered enough to be themselves, their true selves, and feels comfortable enough to share all of them with the community and to make that transition publicly and in maybe in a place that might have a reputation to not be as welcoming to those kinds of thoughts. I very recently, last Saturday, I got my, my new driver's license and it says Rebecca on it and it says female. And I love that because that's my right to exist in public. I would want trans kids to know that you have value, you have worth, your identity is valid. It's possible to, to live a, a quote unquote normal life and be transgender. Parents, religious leaders, friends, so many people at so many points in my life told me that in order to be happy, in order to be successful, in order to be loved, 
In order to be a good member of society, I had to fit into a certain mold. And they're just wrong. They're just, they're just wrong. And so if there's people telling you that it's impossible to live a normal life and be transgender, or be transgender and be happy, or be transgender and be in a, you know, otherwise heteronormative relationship, like, they're lying to you, it's possible. And you can show them my byline if they don't believe you. You know, I think everyone should go at their own pace. But for me, if I could go back in time, I would come out so, so much sooner because every single aspect of my entire life is just a million times better. So yeah, that's most of my story.